Hello and welcome to the video. This is a video updating you how I've built out my Dragon 2. This is a model from Reptile. It's a new model by any stretch of the imagination. I did a video a couple of weeks ago talking about how I was thinking of setting it up and going through the main features. This one comes with two interchangeable tails. I've gone with a traditional tail. There is also a V-tail as well and it's quite a reasonable size bear. Now I've got this as a couple of you suggested it. So thank you to those of you again that kind of forward about doing that because I got the ZOHD Altus in and I quite liked it, but I wanted slightly longer nose for more battery choices. Uh, and this is a substantially bigger model than the Altus, but it shares an awful lot of commonality with it, even though it's a little bit older. Now I've built mine out, surprise, surprise, with walk snail in the nose. I'll give you a close up in a minute of how this is all gone together. A Speedy B F405 wing a mini flight controller in the back. Uh, I've actually pulled those two components from the ZOHD Altus to drop them into here and with a very minimal amount of changes to iNav it's now working great in here and it's all built out. Now a couple of things before we get too far into this. Uh, the glue joints in this, or this one anyway, haven't been great. Um, I've had to re-glue quite a few things that have started to part under pressure. The other thing as well is that the fit of things like this cover aren't very good either. It, you have to kind of pull the foam apart in order to get it in. So the quality of stuff hasn't really wowed me. Similarly, the servos that are in here are analog plastic geared. If I was building this myself, I think I said this in the first video, I would go with digital metal geared servos for slightly more torque, slightly faster responses and also a little bit more resilience to being stripped in the event of a crash. There aren't any throws in the manual. I'll show you how I've set my linkages up here. Everything looks okay for the Maiden. Uh, because there's no throws in the manual, come on. I've eyeballed it, which um, is always fun. I've gone probably on the slightly upper end of what I would feel comfortable with for this. When I get to fly it, I'll go through what all the throws are and what I've dialed them in on. The only thing that I did tweak was the rudder. I'll show you that in the iNav setup. Uh, the rudder throws, I think, were excessive and potentially causes a bit of an issue. Now, to get central gravity in here, I'm having to still use quite a large battery. It is really designed for an action camera at the front. Probably say that again before the video is out. And it does mean that about 410, 420 grams of battery is enough to get the central gravity where it needs to be. So you can't get away with a cute little... 2200 4S pack in this and stick it right in the nose, even that won't get you anywhere close. It's got to be a much bigger battery. However, this does give me options for the future by adding more weight up here with something I'll talk about in a moment. All up flying weight for this with that 413 gram battery, I think mine is, is about 1.3 kilograms. I think it's actually 1,287 grams, just checking my notes. So it's not very lightweight. However, it has a huge wingspan and that weight should mean that it's relatively resistant to wind. I've made a couple of mods. I'm gonna put links down below to these. I'll make them available. I have installed the Walksnell unit behind this grill. The grill pushes into place where the run cam, um, sorry, the GoPro would probably go. And that has the Walksnell unit behind it for loads of airflow. Uh, I've also made a cover for this little piece at the back, which is where you would normally have an antenna. There's loads of antenna holes here for T antennas, FPV antennas, it's very good like that. And also for the other servo on the other side, which I'm not using, I've made a little cover rather than just have a big hole with a piece of balsa wood mounting in there. So let's get into a little bit more detail and show you how I've put it together from the separate pieces because it comes as a load of stuff in the box. I'll put time codes down below and hopefully by the end of it you'll be able to build yours out and hopefully have it looking roughly the same. For building you will need basic glues and some basic tools however because of some of the issues with this particular kit I also had to break out my Z-Bend pliers for the push rods and some other pieces too. But let me go through each of the steps because there isn't a build manual as such with this and you find out a lot of a model like this when you actually build it out. First thing I did was gluing the spars in the underside of the ailerons using Yoohoo Pour, left them overnight to set up, put them aside. Next thing to do, I checked all of the servos for the movement, made sure they were very happy and then centered them. Sadly, they are only plastic geared analog servos here. If I was building this for myself, I'd probably treat myself to some nice metal geared servos. 
installed the first servo once I centered it and attached the servo horn into the vertical tailpiece. No need for hot glue here, the cover goes into place and is held in place with screws. Then I attached the control horn onto the rudder itself, add a drop of glue for safety would be my top tip. Once that's done, then it was next to servo in the side of the body. I centered and installed using screws this time because there isn't a covering plate. No need for glue again, which does make replacement of servos a little bit easier. Sadly, the servo extensions that I needed to get the servo leads from the end of the tail all the way back into the body weren't included in the kit so you are going to have to source two of those. Next was the servos into the wings. I removed the connector by taking out the three counter screws on it at the end that has the electrical connections that gives you access to the connector for the servo. Once you've got that there then it's just a case of centering the servo, attaching the horn, popping it into position and plugging it into that connector and then popping the connector on the wing route back using the three screws and then using screws to cover it with the same kind of plate that we use for the vertical stabilizer. Next then was the motors once I've done both of those. You will need to screw the holder onto the back of the motors. However, I found that the screws that were in the bag with the motor itself were too long. So maybe use some of the other screws. The way I got over that was I just quickly designed a 3D spacer. I also would push the motors slightly forward just to also give a little bit more cleaner air, hopefully. There are three spare wires in the wing on the connector in addition to the three that we're using here for this particular setup. It would have been great if there had been four extra wires. Um, you're going to have to use the ground as a common, I guess, if you wanted to do something and maybe mold something out into the wing, maybe your video transmitter or something like uh, Express LRS receiver or something like Crossfire if you're going to fly longer ranges with this thing. The holes on the motor mounts actually on the wings I also found had issues as well. The molded holes for it looked like they were designed for threaded screws whereas they've actually got brass ferrules behind them that you screw the machine screws into. So I used an X-Acto knife to cut the holes big enough so that those machine screws would go into those brass ferrules nice and easily. Then routed the wires from the motor into the ESC bay and then soldered them onto the ESC and then checked the rotation with a servo checker just to make sure that we have counter rotating props. I had to swap two of the wires over on one of the ESCs. It's dead easy to do it at this point in the build. I did solder on XT60s on the ends of the connectors for the ESCs because the flight controller I'm using here, I'm reusing the one that I did in the ZOHD Altus build. It's already set up and built out for a twin model. Final steps then were gluing the inner wings to the body uh, and also gluing the tail together, the vertical stabilizer onto the horizontal stabilizer onto the actual tail itself. There are instructions in the box, but again, they aren't particularly great. Then it was a case of putting the linkages on from all the servos onto the control rods. There is kind of help in the manual for where they're supposed to go, but I find that all the control rods were actually too long in every single case. With one I actually re-bent it with some Z-pliers, with the others I found I had to snip off anywhere from five to eight millimeters off the threaded part at the end just to get the end on it to put it all together. Similarly I had to open the holes in both the servo arm which is pretty typical but surprisingly also open the hole in the actual connector that was on the control surface too. Now I've guessed at the positions for all of these things. We'll have a look and play with the throwers and where everything needs to be. And I'll cover that in my final flight review video of this. The other thing I did as well is then I started to think about how the Walksnell unit was going to the nose. There's a very big opening here at the front, which is designed to take something like a GoPro action camera. However, that is a perfect thing for me to design some kind of little grill to go in there. And behind that grill can be mounted the Walksnell unit in lots of airflow to keep it nice and cool. So I have designed that. I'll put a link down below if you're interested. So now I've gone through the main build. Let's talk a little bit more about how it looks once I put the electronics in and all those pieces are together. So underneath this single hatch cover, is all of the bits that we've got in. Again, this is a little bit tight. Um, as I said in the introduction, I think the kind of plastic, the, the molding isn't, isn't fantastic. You have to fight to get these things in and out. However, hopefully that means it isn't gonna pop out with airflow. So as I remove that, and again, really like these little 
pieces inbuilt here that you could screw something onto and also the reinforcement underneath we have all the electronics so this is the battery again the battery has to be pretty heavy um, this is a 4s2p i think it is battery um, that gives me good central gravity again i think that's because realistically it's designed to have an action camera in the nose and with all these ones that are designed that way including things like the ar wing pro you need a heavy battery to do it however with this big load of real estate up here in the nose there is room if i kind of reposition these antennas to have a pan and tilt setup and underneath that then there is that walk snell unit which has the grill at the front behind which is the walk snell system again i'll put a link down below if you want to download the thingiverse stuff if you have a similar setup and you have an air unit or something like one of the avatars here that you want to keep cool using my usual trick of having the power to the walk snell unit provided by separate power leads these gst leads these are here so that I can power the system. It can get a GPS lock and be ready. And then finally, just before I fly, plug it together and then we are ready to go. The flight controller here is a F405 wing from Speedy B. This is the mini version. This is actually exactly the same one that I put inside of my uh, ZOHD Altus. Uh, I've taken it out so I can try it in here. The Altus, um, I liked, but I'm hoping that this one will give me a slightly nicer flying experience. Now the carbon spar is kind of locked in place by having the two outer wings attached. Uh, well, let's plug it into iNav in a minute. I'll show you how I've got it set up. But it's pretty standard stuff. Set up as I always do. Uh, the receiver is under this little shelf here at the back, along with the antennas. And under this cover is the little Matek GPS uh, mounted backwards because I'm not using the compass, so I don't actually care. But that allows me to have these leads that go into the XT60s in each side for power. So if I want to test anything, then it's easy to do. And we have the little board here that the USB-C plugs into that allows me to connect it up to the computer. So that's how it's all laid out. Central gravity is really good. Personally, I would put the flight controller probably a little bit further back if I was doing this again just to get it as far back as possible um, the weight of the battery has to be pretty big I'm hoping that if I do go and do something like put the pan and tilt on here when we play with head tracking when that's available on walks now finally um, I can hopefully use a slightly lighter battery because that's going to be about 24 25 grams of weight in the very nose that probably means I can get away with kind of 60 70 grams less of battery so let's have a look at it in iNav. I'll show you how I've got it set up and a couple of things that I've done. So let's plug the cable into the flight controller. And we're now connected. Let's click connect. Go through this reasonably quickly. All the things that I've done here are the standard things that I've done in my iNav setup series. Go and check those out for the individuals. I'll just kind of give you the headlines of how it's set up. Again, uh, the mixer is set for a standard plane with a traditional tail. Everything, all the weights I've set for 100%. I have split the ailerons, so the ailerons are plugged into the first two servo outputs with the elevator into output three and the rudder into output four. I have, however, um, done a couple of things here. I'm running the ESCs on D-Shot. They are D-Shot capable. That means we don't have to do any calibration, which is good because they're analog servos, leaving them at 50 hertz. Down here though, I have changed servo four, which is the rudder, to be a little bit less, 80% um, rates. The rates, as I have the linkages set up for both the ailerons, the elevator, and the rudder seem okay. The rudder, however, it, I think the movements a smidgen excessive. So I've just calmed it down a little bit in here. Um, typically, every single of the outputs had to be reversed. That's just the way this was set up. In the ports, ports are standard for this kind of speedy B. So for example, the serial receiver that's using uh, SBUS at the moment is set for UART2. GPS is the dedicated GPS port, which is UART3. MSP display port to run the walk snail system is set for UR5, and I've turned on soft serial because I want smart port to be enabled here. That is so that I can actually do all the stuff with the on um, telemetry back to the radio. So that means in configuration, there's only a couple of things I've changed in here too. Not 
having the compass enabled externally because, well, it's mounted backwards and it's mounted right by the side of two big whopping magnets for the hatch cover, which is not a great design. In here then, we've got the GPS enabled for navigation telemetry, which does give us that. CPU-based stereo ports is turned on too to give me smart port for the telemetry stuff. Set for continuously trim servos on fixed wing. That's a feature that I actually asked for in iNav, so I'm always happy to turn that one on. Feels makes me very happy. And I've almost permanently enabled launch mode for fixed wing, which is how I've set it up. Failsafe is set to return to home. That's the whole point of having iNav. PID tuning, we'll have a play with once we've flown it. Advanced tuning, if we look in here, then we can have a quick look at how I've got things like auto launch set up. These are my standard auto launch settings. The throttle, I'm probably, let's increase that to about 1600, only because this is relatively heavy at nearly 1.3 kilograms. There's a lot of wing, but just to give me a chance of getting this to, uh, to go. So let's just save and reboot that, just to make sure that when we go and maiden it in a moment, it'll actually take off into the air and climb steadily. Receiver then is set for SBUS. Again, it does have kind of a dedicated setup on this for CRSF connections for your Express LRS or Crossfire. I've just got it set for SBUS. And then the modes are my standard modes, how I've got everything set up. I have the same setup for every single INAV plane, which makes it easy. GPS is running and happy, it's nice and blue. And then the on-screen display is set because it's set for MSP display port in the ports tab. I've got it set in here for avatar. And this is my standard layout that I tend to have as well on these larger planes. So we've got the my speed, my height, variometer, distance direction to home, um, heading compass, the mode I'm in, the throttle I'm running at, the information about the GPS lock, and then battery and current down here at the bottom with the flight time in the bottom right hand corner. So that is how I've got it set up. Pretty standard stuff, nothing particularly unusual. Uh, navigation isn't safe at the moment, but we'll make sure that that's all working before we go to the field. And I guess that's the next video. So that's how I built mine out. The only thing to do now is just wait for a nice sunny day, find a friend that can run the hat cam and chuck this and give it a fly. I'm very hopeful that it's going to be fun. These slightly larger props should give me a decent amount of thrust. I've got my fingers crossed. And even though it weighs about 1.3 kilograms, I think that it's going to have no issues flying at a relatively wide speed envelope because of these really, really big wings. I'm having to sit all the way back here to get it into shot. The only things I would have liked, I think, again, as I said at the beginning, was some of this stuff in this kit is a little bit cheap and nasty. Um, nothing to stop you buying it, I think, if you like the idea. I think the fit and finish isn't fantastic. I think the electronic components, although they're fine, the servos in particular, I would probably just throw those away if I was making this again and just buy four good uh, analog servos. And just little things that kind of bugged me, like there was a little uh, power distribution board thing that goes in the middle, which I'm not using because we have a flight controller, but it didn't have things like the cable runs, the cable extensions to take the servo leads all the way into here from the tail. I don't know whether they're expecting you to put the receiver in its backside, who knows. So join me in the next video where I'll go to the field, I'll give it a fly and do my standard review using the stars. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Painless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.